Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecturer in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform the Man Whitney U test and we're going to learn how to do this by hand. So before we start, let's take a look at the data that we're going to use in this test. I've got the results of an experiment where I want to compare two treatments, treatment A and treatment B. And these are uh, scores or ratings for uh, by six people for treatment A and ratings by six people for treatment B. This tells us that uh, this is an unpaired or independent t-test, as we have two groups being tested once. We have equal sample sizes here. They don't have to be for a Mann-Whitney test, but they just happen to be so in this case here. Now, normally we might use a student t-test to compare uh, two groups for significant differences, uh, but uh, we cannot use a student's t-test if the data are not normal, uh, as is the case here, uh, or if our sample sizes are too small. So a Mann-Whitney test um, based on ranks is more appropriate with these data here. So as is a test, let's uh, outline our null and alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis here is that there is no difference between the ranks of each treatment. Mann Whitney, as I say, is a rank-based test. And our alternate or research hypothesis is that there is a difference between the ranks of each treatment. So in other words, I'm saying in my null hypothesis is that the, both the treatments are the same. And in my research alternative hypothesis that the treatments are not the same. We're going to test here at an alpha value of 0 0.05 and we haven't indicated a direction for our test so we're going to have a two-tailed test in this case here. So it's a two-tailed, unpaired or independent Mann-Whitney test. So as it is a rank-based test, I need to be able to rank all of these numbers, my six values for treatment A and my six values for treatment B. So it gives me a total of 12 numbers. So my first task is to rank each of these 12 values from 1 to 12. So I'm going to write out um, uh, just a series of numbers from 1 to 12 so that I can rank each of my individual values here. So now I'm going to rank all my values from the smallest to the largest value. So I'm going to look for the lowest value and to rank it as number one. I can see I have a two on my data and I also have another two. So I can rank my first two as number one and my second two as number two. Now that gives us a tie. So we'll have to come back to that in a few moments. My next highest value is three. So uh, as I'm going along here, I'm going to tick off each of the values to indicate that I've uh, um, scored them. Uh, number four is my next highest value. And then when I come to the next highest value, which is a 5, so I've got a 5 in treatment A, and I've also got a 5 in treatment B. So I've got to put down two 5s here, which is another tie. My next highest value is a 6 in treatment A, and there's also a 6 in treatment B. So I'm going to put down the two 6s here for another tie. Then my next highest value is 7, which I'm going to rank as 9. After that, I've got an 8, which I'm going to rank as 10. I've got a 9 ranked as 11 and finally I have a value of 10 which is my highest value ranked at my at 12 in this case here. Now before we do any calculations we have to check for ties and yes we have some ties here we have two twos we have two fives and we have two sixes so we need to be able to rank those we can't use a ranking of one and two here because we don't know which two it is okay so for example where we have two values of five uh, one is in treatment A and one is in treatment B so we need to rank those equally so the way to do that is we just take a, the average of the rankings uh, for if we have two values just add the two values together and divide by two so one plus two is three divided by two is 1.5 so my new rankings here are 1.5. Go down to my two fives which are ranked 5 and 6. So 5 plus 6 is 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. My final rankings here take the uh, rankings 7 and 8 and add them together and divide by 2. So 7 and 8 is 15. So to divide that by 2 gives us rankings here of 7.5. So that's how we deal with ties. So now we can see in our data, for example, here, we have nothing ranking as uh, ranking number one, and we have nothing ranking as ranking number two, and so on. So now I want to take these rankings here, which I've just worked out, and put them beside each of the scores over here on our left-hand side. So, for example, in treatment A, the value of three, we can see over here uh, that that ranked as the third highest value. The value of four ranked as the fourth highest value. Then I come to a two, which was ranked as 1.5. Let's put that in there. And I come to 6, which was ranked as 7.5. 2 was ranked at 1.5 again. And 5, as we can see, was ranked at 5.5. Over to treatment B, we can see that uh, 9 was ranked as 11. 7 was ranked as the ninth highest value. 5 was ranked at 5.5. 10 was ranked at 12. 
6 was ranked at 7.5, another one of our ties, and our final value, 8 here, was ranked as number 10. So now that we have all the rankings here, our next job then is, is to sum all of these ranks, because we need to get a value for our, our, our sum of each of these ranks. So I'm going to add up all the values for the treatment A, and when I add all of these up, um, I get a value of 23. Point zero. And when I add up all the values for a treatment B, I get a value of 55.0. So these are my rank sum for each of the two values. Now I'm ready to actually do the calculation for the U statistic, which is what the man with the U test is based on. My U statistic here in the formula, it's equal to my rank sum, and I've just calculated the two rank sums for my two groups, minus N, the number of uh, values in each treatment. So that's in my case here, it's going to be six for each value. So I'm going to have a six here and a six in here. So let's now work out the U statistic for treatment A. So that's equal to my rank sum value, which is over here calculated 23.0 minus uh, n times n plus 1, so I've got 6 values, so that's um, 6 times 6 plus 1, which of course is 7, divide that result of that by 2, and when I work that out, I get a value of 2.0. Next, now work out the use statistic for treatment B, and that's equal to the rank sum, which is 55.0 in this case, minus the n, the number of uh, variables in, or values in treatment B, which is again is 6, times 6 plus 1, divide that by 2, and when I work out this value here, uh, I get a result of 34.0. So I've got two use statistics, but I can only use one, and in the Mann Whitney test, the value that you use is the lowest value. So I'm going to use the use statistic for sample A, or treatment A. So my use stat is equal to 2.0. Next, I need to determine a critical value which helps us um, accept or reject our null hypothesis. So I'm going to go to a uh, critical value, the Mann-Whitney uh, U-test, and this is for two-tailed testing. And uh, it's based on, um, uh, I need the N1 for the number of values in, in uh, group 1, that's treatment A in my case, which is 6. And um, I also need the number of values in group 2, which is uh, treatment B, which is also 6 in this case. So if I just take the row and where the columns meet, so 6 I, I, and row, column 6 and row 6 here, we can see I have uh, values for alpha equal to 0 0.05 and zero, alpha equal to 0 0.01, and I'm choosing 0 0.05, and we can see there that the uh, um, critical value is 5 for n one equals six and n two equals six at alpha equal to zero point zero five. So my uh, u critical is five. So my u crit is equal to five, five point zero. So in this case, then my result is, is that my u stat is less than my u crit at alpha equal to zero point zero five. To be statistically significant, our obtained u, value of 2 here, has to be equal to or less than the critical value of 5. So this is different than other tests, don't forget, uh, where the obtained value is usually has to be equal to or greater than the critical value. So our u statistic here is less than our u critical, therefore we have found a difference. Uh, we can conclude that the difference we have found between the ratings over here for our two treatments is likely to, unlikely to have occurred by chance, so it looks as if the two treatments uh, indeed do differ. So our decision here then is that we are going to reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the ranks of each treatment in favour of the alternate hypothesis that there is a difference between the ranks of each treatment. We have concluded that uh, there is a difference between the two treatments here using the Mann-Whitney U-test. So that's how you calculate the Mann-Whitney U-statistic. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.